I wonder if any of the following phrases have become familiar to you. Shake it out. Take the time to settle the body. Tend to the organism. Checking in with self. How you doing, buddy? How you doing, sweetheart? Breathe, calm, settle, soothe, tend to the container, create a holding environment, check in with the holding environment. <clears throat> I don't know how many times in the years that I've known and practiced and trained with Bill and Susan, I've heard them say these words <clears throat> over and over, gently, friendly and caring, but also firm and clear, like a steady drumbeat of meditation instructions. Not a single practice will go by without some of these prompts and reminders. But what did they all mean? I just wanted to plunk myself down on the cushion, pick a proper meditation pose, arrange the folds of my, my shawl just so, close my eyes, focus on my breath, and be on my way with the all important and serious business of concentration, samadhi, sati, vipassana, to attain states of concentration, single focused awareness, get insights to my here and now experience. Why were we spending so much time with all of this preparatory stuff? I have a background in traditional Japanese karate and classes at the dojo <clears throat> always began with warm ups and stretches. This made sense to me. We were going to be moving and pushing the body in all sorts of ways that it isn't typically engaged in during the day. But why do I need to shake it out before I sit down to essentially do nothing? And what was all this emphasis on creating an inner friendly and supportive environment to develop an inner posture for practice? in addition to a comfortable and alert outer physical posture. I had been meditating for years before I met Bill and Susan, and there had never been a serious emphasis on any of this. But here I found myself learning about shaking out the body, being reminded that this is what animals actually do in the wild allowing pent up energy that's been accumulating in the body to be released, to be shaken out and to be shaken off. So the organism can once again feel at its optimal state of functioning and regulation. Allowing the body to be moved in whatever ways felt needed in the moment, natural and free form from head to toes and vice versa. Essentially relearning that which we as young children did naturally and spontaneously all the time. The clinical world has caught on to this as well with an ever increasing appreciation for how important bottom up approaches are needed in treating trauma which is essentially psychic and physical energy that's become ossified and frozen in the body, reminding us of its existence whenever it's triggered into arousal and activation. It may feel strange and awkward in the beginning, especially on screen with others watching, or when in sangha or on retreat with others present. But looking back now, I see the irony. 
Here we are settling into the cushion or chair to engage with the practice of presence, which is just about one of the most intimate things I can imagine us human beings being capable of doing. While the body is still stiff and frozen within its normal repetitive and habituated range of daily movement and feeling. Did I really think that I can engage meditatively and intimately with all dimensions of the felt sense experience while I am unwittingly disconnected from my own body and my own heart? Did I really expect mind and body and heart to cooperate with this sort of imposed experience? Yet I used to think exactly this like some unintended, not so enlightened aspiration for meditative stamina. I would will myself to sit for lengthy periods of time, hoping and wanting to remain alert and focused, calm and present. And I struggled with what felt like a never ending wrestling match with myself. David's willpower and noble aspirations versus David, it wasn't pretty. And then there's the other half of the equation, the conditions of the heart. How am I approaching my sitting practice initially and ongoingly? Am I appreciating that settling down for formal sitting practice is perhaps the most significant transition I make in a given day as I move from one of a number of daily doing experiences, doing routines and behaviors into one of simply being. We need to feel invited and welcomed. We need to feel supported. Inhabiting the body with a friendly and kind and tender sense of presence. This is a practice of patience, and we need to embody this welcoming patience. The particular practices of mindfulness that we engage in are not just exercises in concentration and not only trainings in awareness. They are deep and profound relational practices. As I experience this here and now moment, how am I relating with it, with me? This is something I came to understand only after learning what it means to cultivate and support and nurture a holding environment. I knew this in my head, but I needed to also know this in my body and in my heart. Is it really possible to hold experiences in the here and now when I am not myself feeling held? Can I really turn towards the unfolding of experience moment by moment with a closed and tight body and heart? This is the way I have come to see it, taking the time to set up the practice taking time to shake the body out with care, easy and loosely. Taking time to focus and develop and support the physical and inner holding environment is not just preparation for practice. It very much is the practice. If you ever open your eyes during formal sitting practice and you take a look at Bill and Susan, you'll notice something. There's movement. They're moving. They're not in motion, obviously, but in their stillness, there is movement. Because the living body is always moving. Heart is beating. Body is breathing. Being able to listen to the body in this particular way, without excessive motion, 
or unnatural, unnecessary frozenness hindering the experience. This is a result and outgrowth of this holding environment that we are speaking of. So as we take the time to gift ourselves with this precious and intimate practice of presence, let us set ourselves up for success. Take the time to tend to your external environment, the temperature, the lighting. Take the time to move the body. Move, stretch, open whatever feels like it needs to be opened in whatever way feels right. Then choose your posture for practice. Use whatever supports will be useful to promote a posture that feels comfortable and also dignified. And then check in with yourself. Say a loving and friendly hello. Bring the smile, this friendly and kind sense of presence. Establish it as your relational anchor and grounding for these practices. And from time to time, while in the midst of your particular chosen awareness practice, check in with your holding environment. Tend to the body and the heart. Holding the mind in these particular ways enables the mind to learn how to hold itself. With ease and spaciousness wherever and whenever it is needed and in whatever ways. Thank you for your attention.